Hi everyone, and today we're gonna talk about fashion and hair. No, just kidding. Obviously, clearly not. Today we're gonna talk about how to stretch your own canvas. Because I paint on regular fabric that I prime myself, and then I have to stretch on a custom made wood frame. Now, you may ask, why the heck don't you just buy canvas from the store that's already stretched and just avoid the whole hassle well there's a bunch of different reasons one of them is the price this is a lot more expensive than this another one is that at the store you can usually only get a white cotton canvas at the fabric store you can get whatever you want and that has a big impact on your paintings you know it gives you a lot more freedom another one is size you are constricted to certain sizes if you go to the store and buy a canvas. If you cut your own piece of fabric from a roll, you can just choose whatever size you want. And last but not least, storage. Because once this piece of fabric is rolled up, it takes up little to no space. This thing is a lot more bulky. And once you have a bunch of these laying around, maybe after you've been painting for a couple years, they add up like crazy, believe me. Under my bed there is no monsters, there is just a bunch of stretched pieces of canvas and it is very annoying. So yeah, let's get started. You can use any long, thin pieces of wood. They just have to be at least a couple centimeters thick. Mine here are 38 millimeters by 22 millimeters, which is perfect. Then you need to figure out what size the painting is going to be once you've stretched it. You need to measure the size of the painted surface and decide how much of it will be visible. I think that for this painting I will make a wooden frame that's 44 centimeters by 32 centimeters. Now on to the corners. There is two ways you can cut your pieces of wood at the corners. Option one is easier because all the cuts are perpendicular and all you need is a regular saw. You might even be able to get the pieces cut down to size at the store where you buy them. Just remember to factor in the thickness of your pieces of wood and make sure that the outer edge is the size you need it to be. Option two is a little more complicated. You need to cut every piece at a 45 degree angle so that they fit together and form a square. Again, remember that the outside edge is what you need to consider when you're cutting the pieces to size. To cut the corners at 45 degree angles, you will need a saw like this, which might be a worthwhile investment if you plan on building multiple frames. 45 degree corners are more stable than those in option one. If you were to make a bigger frame, you would want to put an additional support piece in the middle. One essential piece of equipment are these special prongs, I guess. They are used to stretch your canvas over your frame and you will need a pair of these because regular prongs will tear the canvas. So this is something you will need to buy. Another thing that you might need to buy is a stapler. It's one of those kind of power stapler, stapler guns. And you can get electrical ones too, but you know, these help build your underarm muscles. Just kidding, these are cheaper. Also, please always remember when you're working with wood, elegance is essential. I bought this contraption here that you just saw 
for like six euros at a local grocery store Lidl they have a bunch of weird stuff you know crafty stuff and it actually works so much better than I thought I'm sure you could find it on Amazon or something that's actually really cool This is now all glued up and pretty sturdy, and now we're going to put the painting on the stretcher, I guess, if you call it that. One little thing I wanted to say, you could put screws or the nails through the edges, the corners, to make it even more sturdy, but you do risk um, splitting the wood right where the nails goes in. And for sizes like this, it's not really necessary. If you give the glue time to cure, this is actually more than enough. And if you were gonna make a bigger frame, make sure that you put another piece of wood in the middle so it doesn't warp, you know? Yeah, let's get started! Once you've centered your canvas, you can start stapling. The first step is to put four staples in, one in the middle of each side. For example, if you put the first staple on the left side, the second one goes on the right side, the next one on the top, and then one on the bottom. You always want to work in opposites to create an even tension. Now that I've got a staple on each side, I'm going to put two staples on either side of those first four staples, always proceeding from one side to its opposite. At this point, you can just keep stapling evenly, frequently changing from side to side. Now, two quick little disclaimers. As you might have noticed, I did not leave enough room to properly stretch this canvas when I was painting it. This is something I always do, and unfortunately, it's just what I have to deal with later. Um, this is not going to be a perfect edge, but it is going to be good enough to take a picture of this painting and eventually maybe put it in my portfolio, which is my goal right now. So please leave at least five centimeters or like two inches or something at the edge of your painting in order to be able to stretch it correctly. And then now we get to a point that is crucial, which is the corners. I have a way to do the corners, which usually works. And basically, let's see if I can show you this correctly. You flip one side in, and then you flip the other side over it. And you see now you can see this neat little seam from the outside, but what you don't want to do is this. This you don't want to do, because that just looks like someone who doesn't know how to, how to stretch a canvas. You want to do kind of like the opposite, the inverse. So you first want to fold it in and then over. And then you can adjust the amount of flap, I guess, that you fold over so that it turns out to be perfectly parallel with the edge. And then you put a staple in here. One last thing you can do if um, the corners, like in my painting, are kind of sticking out and aren't staying flat, is you can put a little bit of hot glue under here. This is not for every painting and it is not for paintings that are very precious to you. In that case, do not use anything that's, you know, gonna permanently adhere the canvas to the wood in case you will ever want to take it off and put it on a different stretcher. No. Is it okay for my purposes? Yes. Might it be okay for yours as well? So let me know what you think. I hope this was useful and let's see you next time.